you will always be a child of God. And that's the security that he has given us. That we cannot lose our salvation. That's if you got it. Now, if you don't have it, <laughs> you never had it. But if you got it, you cannot lose your salvation. I don't care what you've done. Jesus Christ has paid the price. He paid the price for all of our sins. Hello, I'm Pastor Ferdinand Wallace Jr. Hello, I'm Pastor Ferdinand Gaines Jr. I'm the pastor of King David Baptist Church. And I'm the pastor of First Community and the York Baptist Church. We're inviting you to come out to our 122nd year church anniversary on April the 29th at 8 a.m. I'm going to be your guest speaker and I look forward to seeing you there. Thank you. Welcome to the television ministry of King David Baptist Church, 2329 North King Avenue in Lutcher, Louisiana, under the leadership of Pastor Ferdinand Wallace Jr., a church that's warm, friendly, and our doors are always open and welcoming. King David Baptist Church. Good morning. I'm Pastor Ferdinand Wallace Jr., the pastor of King David Baptist Church of 2329 King Avenue in Lutcher, Louisiana. We welcome you to come out and fellowship with us in our Sunday worship service every Sunday at 8 o'clock. Our Lord's Supper service is on first Sunday. Our mission is on Tuesday at 5 o'clock. Bible study, prayer service is on Thursday beginning at 5.30. Prayer service, 6 o'clock Bible study. Come on out and be blessed. Thank you for fellowshipping with us. Enjoy the service. I want to talk about you can count on God. Yes. You can count on God. Because great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. The writer of Lamentation is Jeremiah. Yes. Jeremiah is considered to be one of the weeping prophets because he spoke as they were being captive by the Babylonians. Yet the Jews find themselves in captivity. They were under bondage and Jeremiah was preaching the gospel of judgment upon them. And the judgment that was coming upon him, that's all he preached. And because of that judgment, he felt the doom, he felt the pain, he felt all that they were going through. Jeremiah felt it, often being oppressed. Even when he started on this journey, Jeremiah said that I am too young for this. But God said that I have formed thee in my mother's womb, that I knew you even before you were formed in your mother's womb. Be not afraid of their faces. But he told them, just speak the word of God. Just open your mouth and speak what thus says the Lord. Jeremiah, not only was he one of the prophets that was there, and speak about the gloom that happened there, but also Jeremiah preached for almost 50 years or more. And all he preached was judgment. And not one soul was converted. But he preached about the judgment that was going to come. And at the end of it all, he did not say that, look, did not tell you that it was going to happen. But Jeremiah even weeped for them. He weeped for their sins. He weeped because he knew that God is a righteous judge. And what God is telling us even today, that we should be weeping for our brothers and our sisters those that are lost, those that don't know the Savior, because judgment day is coming. And today or tomorrow, they die outside of the will of God. In hell, they will lift up their eyes. Jeremiah, he was forbidden to marry because he was to give up his time to the word of God. And he preached about the judgment day that was coming upon Israel because they had sinned they were doing things every any kind of way the same way that the world is doing even today any and everything is going on as if there is no God 
But God sits high and he looks low. But in spite of it all, Jeremiah still had it within him in the word of God to see that great is thy faithfulness. That I still can count on God. That God is still right there with me in the midst of it all. And he said in his word, as I recalled to my mind, as he bring forth what God have done for them, have God, how God had brought them out of Egypt, how God had delivered them from the bondage that they were in. He recalled the hope that he had in Christ Jesus, that God had not forgotten about Israel, that how he took care of them in the wilderness, he's still able to take care of them right now. And as much as Israel sinned, God still finds somewhere to deliver them because they were his chosen people. But yet they went right back and did the same thing over and over and over again. But yet God still delivered them. The message is still the same for us. God still deliver us from our sins and he deliver us from our shortcomings yet we still go back and do the same thing but yet God is still faithful unto us he's still right there with us he still look beyond our faults and see our needs great is thy faithfulness as I recall all that God have done for us when we think about where God have brought us from what he's doing even right now in our lives. You don't have to go very far. You don't have to think about what he's done for you 10 years or what he's done for you five years ago, but just think about what the Lord is doing for you even right now. The Lord is still good. We still got reason to give God praise and to give him thanks because he is good. And I got hope in Christ Jesus. That if he did it for me yesterday, he can do it for me even right now. And he said that it's new mercy that I see. Not all mercy, but it's new mercy I see every morning. That even when we're in the midnight hour, but yet at the midnight hour, there is a break of dawn. But at the break of dawn, I have new mercy. And that mercy is God's loving kindness that he shows toward us things that we don't even deserve. But yet God's still merciful toward us. God is still loving toward us. Thank God for his mercy. It was by his grace and his mercy that he have brought us this far. And nothing that you have done is not your bank account, it's not your job, it's not where you live, it's not the car you drive, it's not your neighbor, it's not your spouse, it's not your children, but it is nothing but by the grace of God that have brought you this far. And you ought to thank him for his grace and thank him for his mercy. For if it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? But I'm grateful for the grace of God and new mercy that we see. This mercy is spoken of in the Old Testament some 30 times. And the mercy is God's love and kindness. Grace is God's unmerited favor. The acronym is God's riches at Christ's expense. That he gave us everything we need at Christ's expense. That he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for us. One that knew no wrong, but yet he still was led up a hill that was called Calvary. And he died that you might have life and have life more abundantly. It was through Christ Jesus. It was by his grace. And his grace is he give us strength that we need when we face any battle, any difficulties in life. God give us the strength that we need and that's what he was telling Paul that my grace is sufficient when you're going through your trials when you're going through your tribulations that grace is sufficient 
that I don't care what you're going through, that God will see you through. If he brought you to it, he's going to bring you through it. I don't care how hard it is or how difficult it is. Jeremiah really re realized that God was right there in the midst of them. He was right there. And it's by his grace that we are saved. For by grace are we saved through faith. God saw fit that he wanted to save us. We didn't go to God on our own because yet while we were yet without sin, God sent his son to die for our sins. He became sin for us. He took our place. He became our perpetuation. He became our substitute. He died in our place where we should have been on the cross. But I thank God that Jesus died for our sins because your blood, my blood could do us no good. But it was the blood of Jesus Christ that was able to wash away our sins. And I'm so glad it's my past, my present, as well as my future sins. He has washed my sins away. Thank God, I've been redeemed. I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. And it was by God's grace that he saved us. And not only by his grace that he saved us, but the same grace that saved us will be the same grace that will be able to keep us. Because when we have been born again, when we enter into the body of Christ, we are sealed until the day of redemption. That means that I am in the body and I cannot lose my salvation. If you believe, if you have accepted the Lord as your savior, you will always be his child. You may lose your fellowship, but you will not lose your relationship. You will always be a child of God. And that's the security that he has given us. That we cannot lose our salvation. That's if you got it. Now if you don't have it, you never had it. But if you got it, you cannot lose your salvation. I don't care what you've done. Jesus Christ has paid the price. He paid the price for all of our sins. And the only sin that God will not forgive is the sin of blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. And that's when we have not accepted because it is the Holy Spirit that knocks on the door. It's the Holy Spirit that draws us. It's the Holy Spirit that brings us to God. And if we deny him, we lost. But if you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, as your savior, you are sealed until the day of redemption. And the grace that has saved us is the same grace that is going to keep us. We are kept by his grace. And it talks about his compassion fails not. God is a compassionate and it fails not. The goodness of God. Who is this God? He is a faithful God. That means that God will never leave us, nor will he forsake us. But whatever he promised, that he will do. God is a faithful God. We may not be faithful, because everybody is not faithful. Everybody is not loyal. They say they love you. They say that, but they are not faithful. But I'm so glad that I got a faithful God that whatever he promised me, whatever he's going to do, he's going to do it. He's faithful. Great is thy faithfulness. God did not bring you this for to leave you. He promised us that if I go away, 
I'm coming back to receive you unto myself. I don't know the day. I don't know the hour. But I know that he is coming back. Because everything that he has said in his word have come to pass. It was written. When he died on the cross, he died everything that he said. He did it to fulfill the scriptures. And even today, things are happening in order that the scriptures might be fulfilled. So don't be surprised at the things that are happening. Don't be surprised when you hear all of these things happening in the world. God have already said that these things would come to pass. But it's okay. Because God is still on the throne. He sits high and he looks low. He has not forgotten about us. We have forgotten about him. But God has not forgotten about us. He is faithful to his promise. And not only is he faithful to what he has promised, but he is a very present help. In the time of trouble, he said in the great commission that he have given unto us, we tell us to go ye therefore into all the world to preach and teach and the gospel of Jesus Christ, that they would observe all things whatsoever I have commanded thee. And he said that, lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. I come to let you know that whatever you're going through, that God is right there with you. That he promised us, I will never, never leave you, nor will I forsake you. That's good to know. That even though I'm going through, God is with me. The one that had the footprints in the sand. He talked about there was time where he didn't know how God carried him through. Or how he made it through. But there was time where the Lord carried him. Where he did not see the footprints in the sand. Can you tell the time where you didn't know how you were going to make it? But it was by the grace of God that he carried you through. He brought you through. It was nothing but God's grace. He's faithful. He's right there with us. And he's able to perform it. Is there anything too hard for my God? No, not one. In Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20, he says, now unto him that is able. <laughs> now unto him that is able. Yes. Now unto him that is able. Yes. That he can do it. <laughs> yes. He is able to keep you from falling. He is able to present your faultless before the only wise God, our Savior. God is able. He can do it. And even if he don't do it, he is still God. He got the power. He can heal. He can deliver. But even if he don't do it, he is still God all by himself. God got power. He got power over the fire. See? That even though I walk through the fire, I will not be burned. See? That even though I walk through the waters, it will not overflow. See? That God got power that he can speak to the winds and can say, peace, be still. Only God got that type of power. Only God can spit on the ground and put mud upon their eyes and tell him, go wash in the pool and thou shalt receive thy sight. He is a great physician. Only God can touch, can give a woman that had an issue of blood and all she had to do was just touch the hem of his garment and she was healed. Only God was able to speak and give sight to the blind. And the deaf was able to hear. Only God. He's able. He can do it. He can perform it. He can be whatever you need him to be. 
He can be a mother to the motherless. He can be the father to the fatherless. He can be whatever you need him to be. A lawyer in the courtroom. A doctor in the sick room. He be a bridge over troubled waters. He be a shelter in the time of a storm. He be your bread when you're hungry. He be your water when you're thirsty. He be a friend that stick closer than a brother. Whatever you need, he's able. He can do it. He can do it. He's able. He's able to perform it. He's with us. He's faithful. He can do it. And only that, but he promised us that I will provide. I will provide all your needs according to my riches in glory. David says, I've been young and now I am old, but yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He's been right there with us, not to provide our greed, but he said, I'm going to provide your need. Because sometimes we want things <laughs> that God is saying, no, this is not what you need. Yes. But God will give us the best of whatever yes. we need. Yes. And everything is working out for our good. He bringing you through your trials. He bringing you through your tribulations. It didn't come to hurt you, but it came to make you better. It came to make you stronger. It came to make you a better individual, a better person. Because if I never had a problem, I wouldn't know what faith in God could do. But through it all, through it all, I learned. I've learned. When you're going through, you got to learn. See, I learned <laughs> to depend on God. I learned to trust in him. I realized that I couldn't depend on friends because friends will leave you by yourself. But I can depend on God. I can put my faith and trust in him. He'll be right there. Trust in the Lord. Not with some, but with all your heart. And lean not to your own understanding in all thy ways. Acknowledge him and he will direct your path. The Lord will provide your needs. He did it back then. He can do it even right now. He provided what we needed. What I needed. I needed a savior. And he sent his son, Jesus Christ, in the form of a, a man. See. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins. He made a way back for us. He made a way that we can get to God. There was no other way. But I thank God that he died. But he just didn't die. But he got up out of that grave with all power. My God lives. And because he lives... <laughs> Because he lived, I got hope. Because he lived, I got faith. Because he lived, I put my trust in a living and a risen Savior. My God walks with me. My God talks with me. And he tells me that I am his own. How you know? He's right there. He's right there. He's providing my every need. Everything I need, the Lord has provided. Don't worry about tomorrow. <laughs> I got it all in my hand. Don't worry about the future. It's already taken care of. God has given us new mercy every day. Why? Because every day I got a, a new problem. I had problems on yesterday. But you know what God saw me through? And you know how I know he saw me through? Because I'm here today. <laughs> I had problems on the other day. 
I had problems a year ago. I had problems 10 years ago. I had problems five years ago, 50 years, but God is still God. I'm still here. You're still here. God is still showing up that he is God. How many times do I got to keep on proving myself over and over and over again? Did not do it for you yesterday. I can do it for you right now. Everything you need this day, I will provide. Didn't I wake you up? <laughs> Didn't I kept you in your right mind? <laughs> You got food on your table. You got clothes on your back. You're in good health. You're in good strength. What are you worrying about? You didn't do it on your own. But it was nobody but God that brought you this far. It was nobody but God that kept watch over you. He will provide everything that you need. And if you delight yourself in the Lord, he'll give you the desires of your heart. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things shall be added unto you. Sometimes we don't have the things because if God give us the things, we put the things before God. Or we make the things our God. But God is not going to bless you where you know that you're going to fall. He's going to bless you where you know where your faith is in Christ Jesus. Because some people got things and they worship the things more than they worship God. But God is a jealous God. And he would not have no other God before him. He's faithful. He's with us. He's able to do it. He will provide our needs. And I'm so glad that this God that I serve, he changes not. Thank you for watching and fellowshipping with us. We pray that it has been a blessing unto you. We're looking forward to seeing you in person. Come on out and be blessed at King David Baptist Church. 2329 King Avenue in Lutch, Louisiana. This has been Pastor Ferdinand Wallace Jr. Thank you for watching. If you'd like a copy of today's program, please contact us at the King David Baptist Church at area code 225-869-8595. That's 225-869-8595. Please note the title of today's program. Thank you for viewing today's service of the King David Baptist Church located at 2329 North King Avenue in Lutcher, Louisiana under the leadership of Pastor Ferdinand Wallace Jr. Pastor Wallace and the members and congregation invite you to join them for service starting each Sunday morning at 8 a.m. Until next time, we thank you for viewing and have a great weekend. Hello, I'm Pastor Ferdinand Wallace Jr. Hello, I'm Pastor Ferdinand Gaines Jr. I'm the pastor of King David Baptist Church. And I'm the pastor of First Community and the York Baptist Church. We're inviting you to come out to our 122nd year church anniversary on April the 29th at 8 a.m. I'm going to be your guest speaker and I look forward to seeing you there. Thank you.